gosh. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of We Read It One Night. This is the podcast where two sisters bring you the next romance novel that'll make you stay up all night reading, just like the characters in this week's listener-suggested book, Dark Lover by J.R. Ward, the first book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. Why are these characters insomniacs? Well, because they're vampires, of course. And not those Twilight vampires, either. These vampires are gritty, ninja star throwing, kicking ass, taking names, and having lots of premarital sex. Allison gets a little too interested in the mechanics of vampire blowjobs, and Rachel tells you which two of the Black Dagger brothers she ships the most. Don't forget to put on sunscreen and enjoy the show. Oh, today my brother and I witnessed a hit and run of a sign, but it was still pretty, pretty dramatic. It sounds, she comes in, she's like, oh, we saw a hit and run. And I don't delight in violence, but like you get told there's a hit and run. You assume either like another car or a person or like at the very least a cyclist (laughs) has been hit. No, it was just no. like a street sign. And she came and she was like, oh my God, it was the most so dramatic. But it was like so bizarre because like all right, she, all right, we were trying to cross the street and she was making a left turn, but like it had already turned red. So we had a walk sign. So she was obviously just trying to like beat us, even though there was no reason for her to intersect with our path at all. But she like got into the intersection and then like sped up into the turn. Like she pressed the gas and it was just like the screeching noise. And then she like went up on the sidewalk, ran over the sign, almost hit a tree and then just like off she went. But it was right where we usually stand. If I had been on the other side of the street waiting to stand, it would have been right there. So like near miss, sort of. Shh, not really. Um, however, you did then narc to the police. Yes. So Rachel is a narc. The street sign – okay, I don't know. It's not even that big of a de- news because like both of the street signs at the other at each end of our neighborhood gets hit like at least once a month. So, like, it's just standard, like, procedure at this point. Our uh, suburban town is descending into crime. And violence. First, there's the Ulta gets robbed, like, six mo- six times in, like, three months. And Wait, now what? Street's not- the Ulta is getting robbed all the time. It's, like, constantly getting robbed. But what's the resale value on that? You know what I mean? Like, can you actually – like, I feel like all that stuff is marked up so much. And, like, who's going to buy, like, a random bottle of, like – Well, you got it for free, so – The mark on your soul – for shoplifting uh, yeah, <laughs> from Alta. I mean, I mean, still shoplifting. <laughs> Speaking of marks on your soul, this fucking book. <laughs> that was a horrible trend. All right. Well, anyway, I- we're doing Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. This is a listener suggestion. I Woo-hoo! remembered at the beginning because I wrote it down. It's a vampire romance, but it is no Twilight, no Siree. No, sir. These are real vampires. They're like way lamer at the same time. Yeah, they're a lot more vulnerable, but they do have souls, so Carlisle would be jealous. They're like a separate species. They're not just like, well, I guess so are the ones in Twilight, but they're born. You can't be made a vampire. You have to be born a vampire. Yeah. But you can be like a half human. Like vampires can like procreate with humans, and so you can be like half human and like turn and like into a vampire. Still become, yeah, yeah. You turn when you're cool. 25 when your frontal lobe is fully developed. Yeah, which is nice. I appreciated yeah. that. Like, there's I feel like there's no need for ever to be like teenagers. But yeah, like it's always teenagers, <laughs> like for no reason. It could easily be like an adult, but it just isn't usually. <laughs> like, well, I feel like that started with Twilight. I don't know if that was the trend. Like, I'm thinking it like a uh, True Blood, right? Like that's adults. I wasn't even thinking specifically vampires. I was just thinking in general this type of thing, like fairies, like all that shit. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that began in like the YA. Yeah. Because why I mean it existed, but it wasn't like a, a thing, TM. I mean until like the early two thousands. I guess. Think about like the labyrinth though. Like I feel like that's very similar vibes. And like shit like that. And like I don't even know. Like historical. He's not a teenager though. He's just like a 50 year old man trying to marry a 16 year old. Yeah, she's a teenager. Yeah, but he doesn't look like a teenager in the labyrinth. I didn't say he did. I'm saying it's just always like there's no reason for the young, for the girl to be as young as she is usually. Like, but they just do that usually. Yeah, but they hand wave it away in these kinds of things with being like, oh, he looks, he's, he's frozen at 17. So it's not creepy. (laughs) It's technically not illegal. 
well, there's no laws in like the fucking theory world, so whatever. Uh, anyway, this book, the, this book is very gritty. Uh, I just want to start out this episode for this book for a, a shit ton of trigger warnings. It was written. It came out in 2006. Uh, so if you can imagine the type of content that was coming out in mainstream American media in 2006, <laughs> that will give you a pretty good idea. But just so we can be more specific, we have attempted rape, actual rape off page, graphic violence, casual sexism, homophobia, gender essentialism, transphobia, sex worker violence, and general early 2000s bad stuff. Yes, I wrote mm-hmm. that down. Yeah, I feel like the biggest thing is just like the the gender essentialism and everything that goes along with that vibe. Like that's, that was like pervasive throughout. That was the most pervasive. Like I'm a woman. It comes with the description to like cry. I'm a man. No, I honestly, need to it was it was things. no. Honestly, it was mostly the the main element of that was the and this is also the ca- the homophobia um, of them being like, huh, you want to kiss me? You yeah, know, when they're too. trying to like. I wouldn't – yeah, that was part of it, but, like, there's way I just felt like it. that – I felt like that was very – that was, like, their main mode of communication <laughs> when, like, the bros were talking to each other. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so true wording for that. I, I – I, it felt – it was very gritty. It felt like, like a police procedural slash a little noir slash, like, HBO show. It definitely wasn't dun, dun, something dun, that dun, I dun, dun. would have read. No. I mean, this is, like, a wildly popular series. It wasn't something I would have read if it wasn't for the listener suggestion. And I'm going to, at the beginning, I was like, you know, I don't know where this is going to be my cup of tea. And then yeah. by the end, I was like, God damn it. I'm going to read the rest of this series, aren't I? <laughs> and there are like 20 books. So this is a commitment. I was like, God, fuck. <laughs> I care what happens to these assholes. <laughs> and I shouldn't have been surprised because. This is very much along the same vein of like, like mafia romance kind of like. Mm. This man is a complete asshole, and so are all his all of his friends. But you still want him to win at the end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, um, we start out meeting our boys who are quote men who looked like they all had advanced degrees in violent crime. <laughs> And yes. Oh my God. I love that. <laughs> Literally fabulous. When is NYU going to give out its honorary PhD in violent crime? That's what I want to know. So you, Taylor Swift that. just got her honorary doctorate in fine arts. Who's next? Step up to the plate. I want wrath. Wrath next. Yes. Okay. So important thing to know. So these boys are members of the Black Dagger Brotherhood, which is the name of this series. They are led by wrath. The <laughs> other members of the Brotherhood are named vengeance pain torment vicious rage fury and zadist <laughs> and i would like you to all know so you you heard those names and you think okay those are all real words zadist has like a z but it's still sadist let me tell you thank god i was on the goodreads page thank god for this one star review who was complaining about the way these are named because i got the spellings of these <laughs> names Wrath is, I mean, I'm not going to do all of them, but Wrath is W R A T H. Torment is T O H R M E N T. Vicious is my personal favorite. V I S H O U S. <laughs> Fury, P H U R Y. Like, truly insane. And then the one star review was like, oh, I can't take this. this is so stupid. Like, these names. And I was like, I saw this. The moment I saw this, I, I read that before because it was like the top review. I read that before I started the book. And I saw it and I was like, yes. Thank God it was an audio book, though. <laughs> like- it was like, I love everything about that. Like, these are violent, leather wearing vampires. And they have these stupid ass, but also like, <laughs> incredibly on the nose names and it's just it's fabulous like it was such a choice for jr ward to make and it it pulled like she pulled it off 100 percent, in my opinion i was like this is absurd this is exactly the kind of absurdity that i need to be able to like fully invest in this book are we sure it's not like vicious like <laughs> i think that's how i no, would pronounce it's pronounced it, vicious I, the- that's how the audiobook narrator said it but if i was reading that i don't think i would have gotten that frankly <laughs> 
<laughs> also, yeah. speaking of names that are on the nose, the ma- the heroine's name is Beth. And like, why is it – it's always Beth. It's always Elizabeth or always Ellie Elizabeth. or Beth. Like, why Beth? I really hate that name. Like, I don't know why. It's just Aww. always like his – I mean, not, I don't hate people named that name. That's great. That's your name. Just something about <laughs> it. Okay. If your name's Elizabeth, personally, I feel like there's so many better nicknames. I would just never go with Beth. If that's your cup of tea, happy for you. But like – it's just not like a melodic, like nice to the ears name. It's like why it's always like Lothair, Ellie, Elizabeth. That's the Beth, only other like, example it's, it's we can all, think of. I know, but just like we have Ellie, we have Lizzie, we have Liz, we have Liza, we have yeah, yeah. Elizabeth, if you really want. I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of names that kind of ruin it, the other member of the Black Dagger Brotherhood is named Darius. Which is yeah. my name and properly like I feel like Darius is definitely a badass. I can imar- I can imagine well, someone sure. named Darius in a motorcycle gang. You know what? You know what else is pervasive throughout this martial arts shit? Our old when we took karate. That was yeah. his name. Darius. It was Darius's karate center. Yeah. Of now course, defunct, it's like sadly. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, like Darius is fine. Like it's it's a it's a badass name. But I was like, what like why wasn't it I don't know. It's because she was gonna kill him Slaw- off right away. <laughs> but like spelled with an umlaut or something. I don't Dude, know. What do you think it should have been? Like, I'm trying to think. Well, Swab? I was like, oh, like the seven deadly sins. No. <laughs> it should have been like badass. <laughs> like, <laughs> like something. <laughs> yeah. Mm, what could it be? Um, wicked or something? Yeah. With a Y with two Ys and like a yeah, two Ks. W Y Y D. K E D. I feel like just like yeah. W Y K E D. Wicked. Yeah. But no, but his I mean, name course, is Darius. Don't worry, everyone. Off every, immediately. <laughs> you should have known he was going to get killed off. He dies almost immediately after this initial conversation. And he's important because he's Beth's biological father. And he's like, hey, Rath, my vampire dick was so strong that despite the fact that Beth is half human, she is about to turn into a vampire. I can smell it on her. The vampire pheromones are out. And he's like, you... Got to be there to help her with the transition. Please. Mm-hmm. And Wrath is like, I literally hate everyone in the entire world. Absolutely not. Fuck yep. you. But then Darius dies and Wrath is like, God, God damn it. I can't be the asshole who like doesn't, <laughs> who doesn't honor his friend's dying wish. <laughs> so the other major thing about the vampire world to set up. So Darius's car is exploded by a car bomb that was put there by a lesser. So the lessers are basically soulless humans who work for the devil. Like it's the literal devil, like against God. It's called the Omega. And he turns like basically any human who's like a psychopath can sign up. You have to be a man. like, And, and your job is to exterminate the vampires. Yeah. And the vampires are like a persecuted minority. The devil is like the omega and then the scribe virgin is God. God is a woman, which is a lovely, good choice, J.R. Ward. But yeah, no, the lessers are literally, I read this and I was like, so they're like incel white supremacists. Because oh, yeah. they're described as being like, as you like, the longer you be, you are a lesser, like the more like yeah. you lose your color. So like eventually like your like hair is pale white and like your skin is pale white. They're described like all the lessers are like the perfect recruit is like the misogynist psychopath definitely would have become a serial killer if like he wasn't recruited to this organ. Like yeah. And they can't have and they can't have they can't have sex. Yeah. You, a lesser, you can't have sex anymore. So like your, I think yeah. it's just because your dick doesn't work. It's not your really dick doesn't work. Like you get you you cut out your own heart and like put it in a jar. <laughs> so that's nice. Oh, okay. Wait, wait. Yeah. Is that what they do? Because yeah. they were always talking about the lesser's jars at the yeah. end. And I was like, what's in the jar? It's got to be were the Were we heart. ever told that? It, no, but I think he definitely said like he has to do it himself or else he's going to die or something. It's either the I dicks or the hearts. I'm, I'm 90% sure it's the I don't hearts. Think it's we, the know, <laughs> we know they don't have hearts. They just have like a black mass. And it's cool. When you stab them, they like explode. So like it's very clear that they're not actual people. And I, I feel like it's always a cop out to have like the villains be like God and the devil. And maybe I'm just like – maybe that's just because like I, I read a lot of Brandon Sanderson series and he always does that. And it always – it just like – it always falls flat for me. Like it just like turns into just like sort of a – it just feels like very hand wavy like cop out for like that to be the, the um, conflict. But – I thought it was well done. I mean, we'll see how it ends up in the series, but this book at the very least, like, because when when Rath is telling Beth about like the scribe version versus the Omega, which I thought, side note, I thought the Omega like was gonna be like turn out to be a werewolf, and this was gonna be a vampire versus <laughs> werewolf thing, but like no dice, it's just the devil. She is like, oh, so the devil and God, and he's like, I mean, like, kinda, but not really. So like, it's not, it's not like explicitly this is, and and the scribe version, I don't think is like. 
yeah, the scry virgin created the world. She created vampires, though, specifically yeah. to be like her. And that's why the Omega hates them, because it can't make life. Whatever. Oh, another important thing. So Wrath, he is, like, nearly blind. He's, like, always been, like, he had poor eyesight. And then it's just, like, gotten worse with, like, his 350 years of age, however the fuck all but it only is. affects him, like, for random. It doesn't really affect him at all. Like I mean, he just, just like, he's a vampire, so away. he has, like, heightened senses anyway. Mm-hmm. And, like, he can still see, like, can like see whenever it's vague light. You know what I mean? So he can see, like... He can still see like facial feel. like he, whenever it's convenient, he's like, Oh, I can see that Beth is so hot. I can see exactly how she has her hair, like random shit. Well, he she can did, see that her hair is up or down because it's basically like black the only hair. time it's like inconvenient for him is like he can't cut his own food for some reason. Like he struggles or with weed. that. Well, sure. But like what but I I do I feel like the reading thing, like if if she wanted him to read, she would just be like, Yeah, and of course this letter was randomly in Braille somehow, like for no reason. You know what I mean? Like it was I whatever. It was good representation. I did it. You were you were like, I don't know. I felt like it was pretty consistent with how he couldn't see um and just like used his other senses. You can immediately tell the bath is super hot somehow. Because his his the magical vampire hormones are like, She's hot. (laughs) She's his mate. But Wrath being blind is not the most important part about him. Although, yeah, she does – J.R. Ward random, like works in Braille like in on the reg with him. So like I appreciated that. But So he's the only purebred vampire left. So like his parents are both vampires. And he doesn't have like a drop of human blood. And he's also the vampire king. But That's he's why like, he's the king. He like – yeah, he watched his – um parents be murdered by like lessers like 300 years ago and so he's like i can't be the king because i can't be responsible like i couldn't save my parents so i can't be responsible for the vampire people but like given the characteristics of vampires it just seems so dumb to want your king to be purebred vampire because it just seems like a strict weakness like basically vampires can't go out in the sun because they like get third degree burns they get incinerated and like they're long lived and like can heal but like they're still have like huge maternal mortality in all the regular ways. They don't get diseases, but like other than that. However, if you're part human, a lot of the time you can go out in the sun and, you know, have all the other stuff Like you can still like you still live a long time, blah, 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 whatever. So like it seems like it'd be much more beneficial to have like half human with like strong vampire blood because then you could go out in the fucking sun. But I don't think – um like I think Wrath has like extra power. Like I think he's like stronger. Like he's faster. He's stronger. He can heal Ascending, faster. He, he like also has. Weakness. He also like he has like the disappearance thing. He has other. Oh, he does things. have a lot of power. He's I think a he lot can of like powers. read people's minds. Like he can manipulate he, emotions. He can like yeah. So like th- there are some benefits to being a pure blood vampire. They're kind of underutilized because I really only like remember that really coming into play at the beginning. So there there are some benefits. But yeah, I was like, I don't know. Vampires seem like it's kind of lame because like they can be killed in all the regular ways besides and like, diseases and like also the sun. And like half um, the women die in childbirth for some reason, which was another thing I just like yeah. felt very unnecessary. I'm like, you're making these people. Why are you still like killing off the women like this, Jared Ward? Like, it's for because what? they need so like, they, start, like get, they all like basically have like. I get like vampire hemophilia, like basically because they all die from like blood loss. Like that's what they die in childbirth. And because like there's like a doctor character who's trying to like figure out vampire blood transfusions or whatever. Yeah. Well, but also like it's not like they're they can get pregnant as much as humans. Like it's like they're only fertile like once for two days every 10 years. (laughs) And basically like when they're fertile, they just become like sex monsters. (laughs) just seems super lame but they can eat people food and they don't even they don't have to eat humans like they can but it's not that good for them yeah they drink other vampire blood like that's the like prime blood yeah the human blood it only like sustains you for a few days like not very long so cut to beth beth has been like she's an orphan she's been brought up in the foster system because her dumbass dad darius was like oh vampires are so persecuted and like beth might never become a vampire so like i don't want to take care of her her mom died like in childbirth so I'm just going to watch her from afar, which like, okay, that sort of holds up to scrutiny, except that you consider that Darius is a fucking multimillionaire. So why is he letting his daughter grow up in the public foster care system? No. Why would you, why wouldn't you like pay someone to take care of her at the very least or like send her to like good schools or something? Like instead he's just like stalking her from a close distance. He also has a personal servant. So the vampire servants are not vampires. They're like a separate like subspecies that like doesn't live as long and can go out in the day. He's a servant that takes care of him personally. Why didn't he just like set up the servant as like Beth's fake grandfather or something to take care of her? Like what? It just doesn't make any sense. It just made me so mad. Like every time I was like, why are you? But Beth, despite growing up with the foster system, she has apparently has like no Very lasting well trauma adjusted. from that. Like 
She's a reporter. Well, not really. She's like a copy. She like wants to be a reporter. But her boss, who very aptly is named Dick, who sexually harasses her on the reg, like yeah. won't let her like do the big stories. But like she's still friends with all the cops anyway to like get the juice. Anyway, she's walking home. And uh, like it felt I really liked the way the atmosphere was set up as like Beth is walking home. Like it felt very noir. Like, yes, like, there was like fog and like the hazy lights and it was dark. Like I I felt so pulled. I was like, I can feel this. Yes. Like she's a femme fatale on her way it home. It felt like the ride line to the Batman ride at Six Flags, which is like set like Gotham. And it's like it has like the cityscape. It's like dark. It has like the cityscape cartoon as you walk and like the fog and it's very like gritty. Like, right, well, like, a, like she was in like a theme park, but like a very well themed one. Like can't relate. <laughs> like in Gotham. Like yeah. And, yeah, but yeah. I, I did not have the amusement park experience of you, but I love and support that for you i could just hear like the raspy voiceover like of that like beth what is she gonna do now like i, I can't even, i don't even know what to say yeah but, like, picture it like the yeah. like music the like jazz yes. music like yeah and here we have our hero <laughs> yeah <laughs> walking down she's like in a seven. trench coat she's like she doesn't yet know what she's gonna find there. the like <laughs> heels are clacking on the paid thing yes like, and then like you see and then suddenly we get a close-up of like a pair of men's shoes following behind her and then like we get a close-up on Beth's face turning yeah. around her corner and being like oh, and then like her red lips pouting and then like mm, her the shadow heel, get, the wall. her heels go faster and then like his feet get faster and then like <laughs> she gets ripped into a dark alleyway which is what happened. yeah it was also described almost identically to like in twilight it's like she was heading away from the bar and into the long stretch of vacant buildings the night was thick and dark but at least there were street lights and the occasional car passing the chinese restaurant was only five blocks up like literally exactly like port angeles <laughs> yeah so she gets pulled into the alleyway and like almost gets raped by a man named billy and an unnamed blonde friend and she gets away by like going doing the classic like i think she goes limp and then she likes like twists his balls mm -hmm. <laughs> just fabulous and needs him in the face yeah and then she runs away and i was like i am obsessed with this meanwhile her dad darius is dying in like a car bomb like <laughs> <laughs> a few blocks away so she gets home beth is obviously very upset she you know like it's even though she got away it's still very traumatic however we are slightly comforted by the fact that she has a black cat named boo <laughs> oh my gosh i love boo oh it's incredible i love, boo. I love yeah. him so much oh my God. And, and beth has great cat phone coordination skills that's one of the first <laughs> he boo did not have enough of a starring role no he was like very much in the beginning and then he disappeared until the very end but then he comes in the end i was like waiting we got to the epilogue i was like i need a boo update like i need to know like what's happening with boo and in fact boo is is the star of the epilogue yep love that <laughs> love it um so beth is like oh i like want to call this in but naturally i'm like really traumatized i don't want to like go back over it and as she's like debating what to do she gets a call from her friend what is his name again jose jose i thought it was i i think i remember this because when jose was first introduced before we found out he was married i thought he was gonna be like you know uh like love triangle love interest character and i i only remember that his name was jose because it's the same name of like the 50 shades of gray like oh right triangle. yeah oh my god i mean there is like a little bit of a like love triangle setup but it's not I mean, jose yeah, but not with Jose. But yeah. Jose is basically like, hey, Beth, there was a car bomb. Like, want to come check it out? <laughs> like, she, she doesn't know it's like her dad. I don't think she ever finds out, actually. No, she does find out it's her dad, like, much later on. She's like, um, like, I guess, and, like, goes down. She doesn't want to, but, like, she goes down. And then, like, she gets cornered by Butch, who is another cop who's going to have, like, a big role here. Who has a long history of police violence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Initially, I was like, I don't know whether they're supposed to like Butch or not. Because right. he's, like, he's like the classic. It's like the gritty police procedural. He's like the hard-hitting right. cop with the traumatic backstory. And I was like, am I supposed to like Butch? And then it like quickly became clear that I was supposed to like Butch. And right. I was like, I feel very conflicted about liking Butch. Because on one hand, like, 
he's like the gritty man with a dramatic backstory. But on the other hand, he's like a very, very violent cop. Like he notices that Beth has like a, a split lip and like a bruise on her face. And his reaction isn't like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, let me, he like pins her to the wall and is like, tell me what right the fuck now. Like who did this to you? Like how, well, not, not, it's not like in a romantic, but he's like, who, like what happened? Like, tell me, we're going to report it. Like fucking tell me. And she's like, okay, you're just like re-traumatizing me right now. Like I'm not fucking telling yeah, you anything. I'm going to be honest. Like I was on one hand, I was like, not a good move, Butch. But on the other hand, I was like, I really love a man. It's it's who did this to you? But it wasn't really though <laughs> because he it wasn't – I said it like that, but like it was, didn't come out like that with him. He was like – he was basically just like, I, I need to solve this mystery and you're going to fucking tell me because you were the witness. It wasn't like – yeah, but then he does concern. later like beat up. Yeah, Billy. he does. He does. But like at that point, I was like, this is not the way. Yeah, we find out that Butch's like um, tragic backstory is that his like sister got kidnapped and raped mm-hmm. when he was like a teen and murdered. So like he, this is very much like, you know, yeah. on his trauma butt button pushing wheelhouse. Definitely, but that's like not the way to get someone to tell you like literally. Anything. No, it's not. <laughs> no, <laughs> this does not inspire confidence. Like, don't do not. They do no, not attempt at home. Definitely <laughs> not. But yeah, but Butch, the whole, the whole deal with Butch currently is like, he's definitely set up. And I'm going to be honest, like when Butch was first introduced, I like forgot that Wrath was like the love right. interest. So I was like, oh, Butch and Beth, like I'm kind of right. into this. And then I was like, oh, wait, no, Wrath exists. But yeah, Butch has like a crush on her. But that's like quickly resolved later on. But we find out at one point that like right before you're about to turn into a vampire, there's like there's like a whole list of things that like happen to you. You're like always hungry but like you can never get full you're like sensitive to light and like also suddenly a lot of people want to fuck you that is like yeah. a like a canon thing that happens when you're about to turn into a but vampire you're not interested in them yeah so i'm like did is butch like just right like, is it only because like she's releasing like vampire pheromones or right. like did he i mean she is supposed to be hot and like all the you know police officers have a crush on her but it's like yeah yeah yeah, so it's unclear. Um, yeah, because like if Billy Riddle didn't already exist, that's like the almost the would be rapist who like attacked her. I would have thought Butch would almost like be that role, except that he's like anti Billy, so he can't be. But like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I would have thought he would have been the one who was like trying to force himself on her or something, and then like, no, oh, yeah, they're all all of the men that we're supposed to like in this book are like very much anti heroes. Yeah, but you know that they're each going to get their own love story because like that's how it works. It's like the pro- mm-hmm. like, and I'm I'm quoting a tweet here but it's like you know the promise of the paranormal paranormal romance where like you meet a bunch of like you meet like the hero and then he's like and here are my six scarred brothers with traumatic backstories who are cursed in equally individual ways and you're like good good i i know what's going on here. and that's exactly the case here it's exactly the case which isn't one of them yet though but like yeah but he basically gets he he's like their little human brotherhood pal we also okay so we cut from beth we meet marissa who is wrath's shellen so like we said before, vampires need to feed off other vampires. And the way it works is that it's like kind of like sexual. And usually like you kind of just like pair up with like a vampire of the opposite sex and like feed off each other. And that kind of creates like a connection that's not always – like it's not sexual with Wrath and Shellen, but like – Wrath and Marissa. But like Marissa wants it to be, but Wrath's like not interested in her. But like usually it is. It can become like husband and wife. Yeah. Yeah. The ideal situation is this, it's with like your mate. Yeah. You know, but you also can like read their thoughts and like feel their emotions and like find them wherever once you've done that. So it's like very intimate and like something that's really uncomfortable to do with someone that you're like not, you know, into in that way. But that's what Wrath has going on because that's who his parents picked out for him before he died. And Marissa, she's like an aristocratic vampire. Yeah. She has like super pure blood or whatever. And she like came and helped him with his transition. She like saved him basically. She's been like dutifully like waiting for him like all these years and not – at all going out and living her own life because apparently just women being his can't blood capri that. son and, yeah and just like <laughs> living at her brother's house her brother's a, a, the vampire doctor and like pining basically and Raph yeah. like does not give two shits about her basically well, no, he well he's cares all about her. her he just yeah. doesn't he just like he's like I'm just not interested in you as a partner which is like right. you know like on one hand like Marissa is miserable and I, I'm not gonna like blame Marissa like on some level I'm like Marissa girl you got to get some self-confidence and like that's her character journey in this book it's like she gets some self-confidence but like it's obviously not her fault because she was like you know entirely her fault because she's like raised in this like culture that is like very patriarchal and like no reason it expects her to like be like this or whatever but on the other hand i'm like it's not wrath's fault like wrath is not obligated 
No. To like her and have a sexual relationship no. with her. Like if he's not feeling it, he's not feeling it. That's and not his fault. And he has like – he offered to like release – to get like a vampire divorce basically. Like he's offered to like release her but she always says no and it would be very – apparently like it's better culturally if like she were – she would be the one to break it than him or yeah. else, you know. It's like super be, like, shameful fun. to like be rejected especially by like the king. Yeah. So she's like – that's her shtick. What's the next thing? Wrath finds out about Darius's death. He's like – and he is like <laughs> – so he, obviously all the Black Death Bragger Brotherhood prefer hand-to-hand combat. Like they're like knives, like <laughs> fists on face, like mm-hmm. uh, naturally. And he has this thought. He's like, oh my God, Darius was killed by a car bomb. Like those goddamn lessers are, are such <laughs> cowards hiding behind technology. And I'm like, yeah, so? He's like, at least back in the day, they were like, they were brave and like faced us. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, listen, I like, I, again, I'm not team lesser, but like that is, that is the smart move. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, that's what I was trying to kind of express before. Like, I would say that is actually the primary, like, it's not just like the gay jokes. It's like that, the primary, like machismo or whatever, like, you know, 2005 bullshit in this is just like all the men being like, I need to unnecessarily sacrifice myself for literally no fucking reason. I need to like be physically vulnerable and like, yeah. you know, physically fight. Butch is like that, all the vampires for no, like not, instead of doing the smart or efficient thing let me just unnecessarily get stabbed m- many no, it times. Is ex- no but it is explicitly i forget which one one of the vampires maybe it's like rage but he's also the playboy i don't know one of the vampires it's explicitly stated that he is like the best fighter and he could like take out anyone and like 30 seconds but like it's not fun for him so he always just like he doesn't use any weapons because he wants the fight to last longer and I'm like y'all your race is dying and this is why (laughs) right they're just like idiots yeah like for what it is I mean it does get called out like the scribe virgin later on is like uh bro the reason the vampires are dying out is because you're just like you and your little gang of like boyfriends are just like you know, being super disorganized and taking out people one by one instead of like you being a fucking leader. Like you're. But they'd supposed be like, to be. "Oh, that like, means we're cowards if we don't fight by ourselves." Like that's like the that's like the so ethos, dumb. like for no reason. The but they get over that. They get sort over of. that by the they, end of maybe. the book. Yeah. No, because wrath is like we're gonna have vampire soldiers and like I'm gonna raise an arm and we're gonna like centralize and like I'm gonna you know he's like yeah. we're gonna get organized. So after having like a nice so okay so remember how I said oh, that the vampires have servants what. Wait, wait. I just want to emphasize um, that Wrath uses throwing stars. That's his weapon. Oh, of choice, yeah. That come from the fabulous. local martial arts academy. Which is, like, <laughs> just very fabulous. Good. The lessers also are currently operating from like the local martial arts academy. And that's where yeah. like the main guy, Mr. X, recruits people. Oh, the lessers also smell like baby powder. Oh, yeah. Like hidden baby powder <laughs> hiding evil. It's like I get the idea, though. It's like a, it's like sort of like a cloying sweet smell like attempting to mask like a a rotting like evil smell here's my question do you think it's because they like bathe in baby powder on the reg or like that's just like what like this the scent they really the omega was like yes my warriors will smell of baby (laughs) like some kind of like formaldehyde like trying to like disguise them as like regular humans yeah so (laughs) so darius beth's dad he left everything to beth but he's like conditionally it's like all left to to wrath if beth doesn't survive into adulthood and which is like so dumb because like i feel like she she does eventually get all her stuff but like up until that point they're like going into wrath's chamber and i'm like no it's fucking beth's chamber because currently wrath sleeps in a warehouse House and only like occasionally goes to Darius's house. He has so, like a little basement like brewing yeah. bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> he has to like grudgingly. So Fritz is like the the subspecies of vampire servant who's like you know his entire life is just like to serve the vampires or whatever. And he's like, oh master, like can I get you some food? And Wrath is like, no, leave me alone. And then he's like, but Fritz looks sad. And he's like, okay, fine, <laughs> fine, you can make me some rice, <laughs> a steak. And some apple juice. <laughs> and this is how you know that Wrath is a good man at right. heart because he's nice to the servants. But Fritz here gave me such like a vibe of like the house elves from Harry Potter. Yes, 100%. Of, like, they have to serve, but like yes. it's okay because they want to like more than anything in the world. I was yes. like, Argh. At least there's no explicit enslavement. Like there's no, there's nothing indicating that Fritz is like physically punished or like physically can't leave or has to obey. Yeah, Fritz doesn't have to like. I, don't I mean, know, he's hire definitely his been like conditioned. He yeah, up. he's definitely been conditioned <laughs> to want to do that though. But like, he doesn't. Yeah, I mean, legally everything is in Fritz's name. So that's true. Fritz does, it, according to the human justice system, Fritz owns everything. <laughs> yeah, and he has to like go out. Yeah, because like the vampires can't go out during the day and everything. Okay, so they're having that chat, and then Wrath is like, all right, I guess I'll go. I, like, you know, I 
it's Darius is fucking dead. So now I'm like guilted into helping his fucking stupid daughter. And he's like, I have a great idea. I'm going to go check her out. <laughs> but instead of knocking on her fucking front door, I'm just going to hover by her dustbins for a while, creep her out and then float through the door. And then we'll have a little chat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But okay, so I didn't realize that Beth's apartment was on the ground floor. This, so like for the first half of the book, I thought he was like he was he just stood like on the ground, like looked up at her third floor apartment, and then just like slowly like rose like like he's in an invisible elevator like, up and then like onto her balcony. God, I was like at least at least this first floor like weird like mist hovering thing makes a little bit more sense. I mean, it's still con stupid plan. It's so con and Beth is obviously like super freaked out. Not only because that's just fucking weird to begin with, but because she was like already you know attacked by strange men like literally a day ago. So she like freaks out and she has to like run away. She knocks over like a pot and like steps on it, and then next thing she knows, she like wakes up in her bed and she's like oh that was weird i had a weird dream about a man which we know means that she's strong-minded because earlier wrath was like yeah when i wipe the human's memories like the weak ones don't remember it at all the strong ones think it was a dream so like mm -hmm. that's strong but then she realized that she has a piece of pottery she casually reaches down and pulls a piece of pottery out of her foot and she's like oh i guess i must have knocked over this pot last night and i'm like how are you really like, profusely bleeding like what like you have some ramic in I your know. foot <laughs> Boo, you just looked at it's because Boo has just been lapping at the wound. Like <laughs> cleaned it off the whole time. Boo and wound. Wrath. This is important. Boo and Wrath have a special connection. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna find that out in a second. But when, when before Wrath is like comes out of the mist, like Beth is like, oh, Boo is just like staring at something outside of the window. Like, what is that? Like, I don't know. Oh, oh, because Wrath can also turn invisible. That's important. Mm, the vampires oh, can turn that. invisible, which is also underused. But they, they can, can sure. Yes, they can like they can, dematerialize. They can apparate. No, no, no. I'm 100 percent certain that they because there are definitely several moments in which like Wrath is like Wrath and like one of the other bros is like watching something, and then they're like the humans can't see us because we're invisible. It's so dumb. Can the, the lesser see them? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> Boo's in favor of him. And Wrath is like, oh, I just didn't mean to scare her. Like, I just wanted to introduce myself and explain. Like, I can't believe she freaked out that much. I'll have to try again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but but he thinks the issue he was like listen i woke her up she was sleeping on the couch i woke her up at 4 a.m that was my mistake i should just go earlier in the evening in this and change nothing else <laughs> but that and it will perfect like that perfect perfect perfect, 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 perfect. perfect. <laughs> but as he's spying on beth i forget at which point, I, I forget which point he's spying on beth that this happens but rather like he makes eye contact with boo and he returned her cat's purr of welcome with one of his own of so like wrath and boo are constantly communicating oh, through yeah. like purrs and meows he's and like always his purring. <laughs> yeah. it's wonderful it's great it's wonderful. <laughs> so I think we can kind of skip this whole Mr. X scene because we kind of already yeah. did that. Okay. Well, we'll get – we'll just set like Mr. X is the current leader of the lessers. Yeah. So just like mm -hmm. remember his – then they all go – it's like it's like fucking like – I don't know, like the Matrix, like Agent Smith. Like they all have like Mr. X, Mr. D, Mr. W, yeah. like that kind of stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> – okay. So Wrath comes back. It's the next night. <laughs> it still doesn't occur to him to just knock. He floats in. And the cat is like, meow, and it's like, psh, psh. and then he, quote, <laughs> ushered the cat into the bathroom with his mind so that, like, poor, you know, Boo's sensibilities aren't offended by, like, I seeing really, this. I really, I was like, good, like, we're, the cat doesn't have to watch them have sex because what happens, <laughs> they see each other, they're like, you, I have never smelled anything so good in my life. We have to fuck immediately. <laughs> That's like she didn't question the need to have him inside her. She only knew she was going to die if he didn't take his pants off. And I know something about that was just like hilarious the way it was phrased. She's just like, <laughs> <laughs> like he's definitely wearing like all leather too. So it definitely oh, took yeah. like a while to like peel it but off. But he has a button down shirt because she oh, rips okay. off the buttons at one point. She's like, she wakes up and she like finds some of the buttons on the floor <laughs> God, yeah. uh, the next morning. But yeah, so they have really hot, really he intense eats her out, sex. Which is good. It's not just yes, like, he eats yeah. her out. Wrath is very sexually generous to Beth. And like, Beth has sure. her first orgasm ever in her life. Which I okay, so I wrote my I wrote a note about that and I was very annoyed about that. 
But we later find out when when Wrath is listing all those like pre vampire transformation things, mm -hmm. that's a vampire thing that you don't yeah. have an orgasm before you turn. So it's not it's not because <laughs> it's it's not like the classic just, like whatever. Yeah. Like it happens to the vampire boys too. Because Beth was like saying before she was like, yeah, like I've never you know men are so into me, but like I've never really been into them, and like I was questioning if I'm gay, like I couldn't figure it out, and she's like, yeah, that whole stick um i also really like that beth is like already gonna become a vampire at this point it's not like he i don't know like like in lothair like they know like he comes yeah, in like and he's like, like he's okay, gonna, like, i can force her into becoming her. it yeah 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 well that's the thing is like that's that's the I, the benefit in terms of consent like it's you can't be changed so it's mm -hmm. like it's just something that was always gonna happen you're either regardless. gonna like survive the change or you're not so like that's right. the only way that like someone else comes into it is like whether they want to help you basically and right. it's, even then, you could still die. So then we cut to Mr. X, and he's out to murder some sex workers with heroin. We, You know that Mr. X is evil because he starves his dogs. To yes, he's mean to his dogs. And this is like the classic pit bull slander, this whole book. Yeah. Like, this is pit bull slander. He's like, I have two pit bulls. I only feed them every other day, and I need to keep them on either side of my house because once I tied them up together and they went for each other's throats. I was I'm like, like, that's – Guys, these poor abused dogs. And I know. Yeah. So he, Mr. X is like, this is, again, it's a classic insult thing. It's like, I can't have sex with these women. So I'm going. To it's kill explicit. Them. Yeah. He's like, like it's explicitly them. stated yeah. by multiple different lessers. Yes. Yes. And he, like, he basically drugs the sex worker with, like, involuntary heroin and then slits her throat. And the whole goal is to, like, lure some civilian vampires who creep out of the shadows immediately to, like, lap up some blood and don't question, like, why is there a dead person? Like, yeah, he just, like, comes out like a fucking cockroach. And his intention is to, like, tranquilize them and take them back to his, like, torture barn. And I don't really know what information he's, like, meaning to get he out of them. but find like the brotherhood, I think. Yeah, but like he also thinks wrath is a myth until like the last third of the book. No, he doesn't. Cause, no, no, that no, that's because he thought that the blind king was a myth. He doesn't realize that wrath. He he never learns that wrath is part of the brotherhood. He thought that wrath was just like the king. Oh, because the king isn't part of the brotherhood. The king is the king. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. So he's and he's unfortunately his his he's given. He has to give him too much tranquilizer. <laughs> and then, like, some other lessers show up and Mr. X is like, ah, oh, like, they can't see me. My plan – like, they're simultaneously, like, a good organization as far as, like, he's like, I, you can't ever ask your subordinates to do something you haven't already, like, perfected. But then he's like, they can't see me. Like, I have to pretend, like, there was no effort went into this and, like, it will be so yeah. embarrassing if they realize, like, whatever. So he has to, like, leave it. And then we cut to Habers, the doctor, who's very much – who's Marissa's brother – and he's like very much Carlisle Cullen vibes. Like, oh my god! He <laughs> so his like his like mate died, and ever since then in childbirth, he like hasn't wanted to eat anyone else's blood until like you know it's a lot, after like, getting like so weak, he finally gave in and like did it with someone else. But he like hated it so much that he wants to make like synthetic blood for vampire blood, so that like whoever doesn't want to feed doesn't have to. And his experiment like seems to have finally worked. So he like. He's like, ah, ha, ha, like, yay. But he's, like, very much, like, you know, he's, like, the morally conflicted, like, whatever, like, Carlisle shit for no reason. And so <laughs> – So that's his whole his whole shtick. He's he's just nerdy and generally just – He'd like, gone through Harvard Medical School twice, direct oh quote. The more, the more he's on the page, like, the more he sucks, frankly. Um, mm -hmm. And I never bothered to learn his name. I In all of my notes, he's Random Vampire Doctor, and that's how I will be referring to him to the rest – for the rest of the episode. I mean, I don't know. His main, like, trait, I would say, is that he really hates Wrath because Wrath, like, didn't appreciate Marissa. Yeah, but he's also a dick to Marissa. Like he like constantly like speaks over her. I don't know Marissa. When we're I don't know I, we're jumping the gun. No, but, but like, like Marissa's communication style leaves a lot to be desired. But she is constantly she she constantly tries to explain. He's like, no, Marissa, I won't listen. And then he storms off. But then like at one point he locks her in her room. Right, but what you're because he doesn't want to go back to the house. What you're forgetting, Allison, is that this has been like basically a two hundred year cycle of abuse of like Marissa like going back yeah. to this like you know unhealthy relationship so like why would he the way she phrases it does not make it sound like anything has actually changed she's just like no he is a good person like i need to go back you know so it's a communication style that leaves a lot to be desired but whatever later in the series according to the fan wiki random vampire doctor becomes the leader of like the super vampire misogynist club so like what i feel like i'm just 
that's literally he becomes there's like i don't know i can't pronounce it I, it begins with a g there's like something in universe that's basically like the super vampire misogynist like slut shaming like puritanical basically like vampire catholic church kind of shit <laughs> and he becomes like the leader and like the epitome of it like that it literally says in the like wikipedia mm-hmm. he is like the prime member as of right now he runs like the only clinic in the species yeah so wrath is like oh my god i fucked beth and um i'm really fucking mad that i can't stop thinking about her and i'm definitely falling in love with her Who jumps into his arms immediately yes because they're best friends so they have sex he's like oh my god like i can't stay with her because like i'm evil and it won't be safe but like i'll just help her through a transition and like fob her off on someone else but like grr it makes me so mad whatever that's his whole thing his whole yeah, his whole trauma is like I can't get close to people because then they get hurt. I can't protect yeah, them. Yeah, I'm, I'm too weak. I'm not a good classic male. bad boy trauma. Yeah, and he yeah. like makes her memorize his cell phone number instead of just writing it down like a normal person. And he's like, "Meet me tonight. <laughs> Meet me tonight." And Beth's like, "Fuck, I can't. Like, that's crazy talk." And then she goes out to dinner finally with Butch, and okay, they're squared away. And Beth this this whole time is like, first of all, every time she goes outside, she's like, "It's so weird. The sun is hurting my eyes. I don't understand why." Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, it's so bright. Um, she also I do appreciate both multiple times Beth is like oh my god we keep fucking without a condom and she's like worried about STDs and I'm like you know I'm glad we get this acknowledgement like finally of course it's completely unnecessary in this particular situation because vampires can't get human STDs but like yeah I know it's it's a complete it's unlike yeah there's like some books where they're like oh they're like halfway through having sex and they're like oh should I get a condom and they're like no I'm on the pill I'm like all right like <laughs> it's like I would say it's 50 50 sometimes books are like should I get a condom? No, I'm on the pill. Are you clean? Yeah, I'm clean, which I don't love the word clean for that, but whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, Butch, Butch and Beth go to dinner and then Butch kisses her and then he's like, oh, like that didn't do it for you, did it? And she was like, no. And he was like, rats. But first he's like, he didn't want her to feel uncomfortable if that wasn't where she saw things headed. And then he's like, well, aren't I turning into a nice guy? And I'm like, all right, yes, Butch, because like not pressuring women for sex is really like, <laughs> you know, raising the bar there. And then right after that, he's like, he moved quickly so that she wouldn't have time to think and neither would he and kisses her. And I'm like, all right, Butch, nice guy. Like that lasted a long time. All right. <laughs> like, and and Wrath is watching this from the bushes. He sees it happen. <laughs> and as it's happening, a low growl vibrated through his chest and out of his mouth. She is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Off the charts. Like <laughs> it's incredible. Uh so anyway, <laughs> Beth goes into her apartment and then Rath is naturally like, it's time for me to sneak in the window again and not knock on the door like a normal fucking human being. I mean, he's not a human being, but so he knocks on the door and then Butch is like, not on my watch, bucko. And he goes in and he arrests Rath. <laughs> And Beth comes out and she's like, this is when I discovered that her apartment was on the first floor. Like at the beginning of the scene, I thought she was like yelling down from her third floor balcony, <laughs> but like, no, it's on the first floor. And she comes back. She's like, no, like, let him go. Butch and Butch is, Butch is like yelling at Beth. Like he's like, stay back, Beth. This is police business. And Rav's internal monologue. He's like, listen, I already don't like this little bitch. But if he talks to Beth like that one more time, I'm going to rip off his dick with my thumb, with like my thumbnail. Like, God. I, like he is like, I, I no, don't. And I was like, yes, I love a man who is like, do not talk to my woman like that. And like, the, I can't remember the context I wrote this in on, like what exactly is going on. But I wrote down the like, wrath not killing Butch because he has a heart on. And I'm just like picturing like, was he like embarrassed? He's like, oh, I can't like do this right now. Like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I don't know why he doesn't just like dematerialize in this and every other situation where I don't like, know because he can't give it away. Uh, he wiped their memory though. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, he he gets arrested and Butch is like, I'm not gonna call for backup because I'm a man yeah. and I hate this guy and I got him in handcuffs. So stupid. And then Rath is like, rookie move, dick wad, and he like flips off the handcuffs and then like holds Butch up in a dark alleyway by the police station, like, by his neck. Yeah. And, like, Butch is slowly dying. And Wrath is so pissed off because he's like, I want to kill this guy, but he is taking it like a warrior. Like, there is no pleading. God. There is no, like, fright. Like, he's, like, so pissed that Butch is like, It's not, definitely like, because Butch is just, like, suicidal. Like, that's definitely what's Oh, around. no. It's explicitly yeah. stated that Butch yeah. is suicidal on, normal, on numerous occasions. <laughs> yeah. Beth rolls up. She's, like, popped in a attack 
taxi and follow them to the police station. And she's like, Wrath, no. And Wrath is like, I will never kill someone in front of Beth. You get to live, bitch boy. And then he (laughs) dematerializes. God. (laughs) No, but while, oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. We get, he like drops Butch. Butch is on the ground, like cut, sputtering, coughing. He's like, I literally was on the brink of death. I need a moment to recover. And I love the comedy of the scene. Butch in the background, just like yes. writhing on the ground, yeah. and Wrath and Beth having this very serious conversation <laughs> in which Wrath is like telling her all about he's like, You're hungry all the time, your teeth hurt, like whatever. And then but it's just the comedy was supreme. <laughs> they leave together. Cause like Beth, Butch is like writhing on the ground, he's like, Don't go with her, and also I need medical attention. And Beth is like, um, I gotta go. <laughs> I see you. Like, Thanks yeah, for dinner. He was the, the first guy that to ever make me come. So like, <laughs> but also she's like, oh, how does he know all these things that have been happening? Yeah, and Wrath is like, you don't know it yet, but you are mine. And then he's like, why did I say that? Because I'm planning to get rid of her in a second. Uh, she does call Jose, and she's like, Butch is in the alleyway, and he needs help. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she, she, you know, she does get Butch medical attention. <laughs> she's not just gonna leave yeah. him to die. And like at no point in this does Beth ever question the fact that Wrath just like came into her house and they had sex without any any preamble no conference she's never like oh that was weird like why did i do that she's just like yes of course i did this she's like yeah i don't know she wanted him too which wasn't going to win her any prizes in the mental health department which i feel like is another quote that could have come directly from twilight (laughs) yeah she also tells him he also tells her he's like i knew darius like your dad like i knew your dad so like that's also why she goes with him yeah she goes with him because she like wants answers Uh, and, and she also has like a totally rational like reaction to being told he's a vampire like she's like no fucking like you know what i mean she's not like oh yeah that makes sense like vampires definitely exist she's like what the fuck like not Mm -hmm. today and then he's like you have to like when you transform like you're gonna have to like drink some of my blood in order to like survive it or whatever and she's like she's worried that like she might hurt him when she feeds on him And Wrath is so flummoxed by the fact that she's taking his well-being into account. He's like, this has never happened to me before. She's like, will it hurt? And he's like, yeah, it might be uncomfortable for you. And she's like, no, no. Like, will I hurt you? And he's like, what? (laughs) He just has a 404 error. (laughs) Poor man. This poor dummy. Uh, He is also just like this entire time just cracking under the fucking pressure of not fucking Beth. Like every time he's like near her, every time he's not near her, he just constantly wants to be fucking her. And he's so confused. He's like, I don't understand. What are these feelings? Like, why do I? I want to be around her all the time. And I want to hold her hand. I just want to give her little forehead kisses. (laughs) And I don't understand why. (laughs) So she, she, they go back to Darius's house, which is just filled with like fancy shit. And Fritz is like, Darius was so proud of you. We watched you your entire life. We didn't like that you had a first floor apartment because that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my God. And he's like, yeah, we watched like all the foster families. And like, then you were at the orphanage for a while and you weren't allowed to go outside. We didn't like that. I'm like, all right. Like, yeah, why you did nothing though? <laughs> yeah, why couldn't like Fritz? Like Fritz is like, or in just the, like, like Fritz find could have someone, her. find someone to adopt her. Don't just be like, oh, put her in the system. Like, f- yeah. what? It's very easy to get babies adopted. I feel like compared relatively compared to other kids that have been in the system. And like, what? It's just so bizarre. Something that the audiobook narrator does at random times is give people like random, vaguely foreign, bad accents, and he does this for like Wrath, Marissa, Fritz, like everyone. <laughs> just note that. Well, because they're supposed to have accents, but it's like very like obscure. Like Wrath is supposed to have a British oh, accent. That's what he's I want to know. England. Well, no, they're always referencing like the old country and like the old, you know, and like are they all from like what are they all from like Transylvania? Like are they all from like Rush? Like are they from different places? Wrath is from the UK because he is like living in London after his parents get killed. And oh. I doubt he would have like been able to travel across the continent. Mm. So Wrath is like definitely from the uk it's very western it's very like anglo-saxon like Mm -hmm. the whole thing because they're also like all the vampires and the lessers like live in like new england as well you know like it's very because they like follow each other but yeah i know but it's like the vampires all live in new england because it like reminds them of home you know what i mean like it's it's very like yeah white and very anglo-saxon so anyway, they fuck again. They have like a sex marathon. And then Beth is like, all right, see ya. And I don't understand why they're not just like 
staying with each other 24-7 right. because she could turn into a vampire at any moment. Right. Like in the middle of a work day, in the middle of the sun. Like that, we have no idea. Anyway, we cut to Butch, who's like the classic drinking with a head injury. And he's like, <laughs> he's like on like kicked off the force basically for the police brutality against Billy Riddle, whose dad is a senator. So it's like he went too far with that yeah. one. And he, they're like, you know, they like put out like a missing person thing for like Beth or whatever. But then Beth pop and like, you know, she's also disappeared with like a suspect. So she's supposed to get arrested. But then she just like pops up the next day at work and she's like, hey guys, I'm fine. And they're like, okay, I guess. Like, <laughs> fine. And then but Butch is like very understandable. He's like, Beth, do not hang out with the fucking drug board right. like because he thinks wrath it's like a you know something like that mm-hmm. and like and i'm like you know i i'm on butch's side with this like from his yeah. perspective this does look very very fishy we also have like on wrath's side like he is like very sad and angsty and also hasn't f- oh oh the reason that beth leaves is because wrath mm-hmm. gets super horny and hungry mm-hmm. he's like i want to eat you and i want to eat you out so you have to leave right now they could kill you yeah so then marissa pops up and he, like wrath is like super sensually feeding on her and she's like oh finally like he likes me and then she like looks into his mind and she sees that he's picturing beth and that's when she's like all right we're done and i'm like they could have just they could have broken up the whole time like you're you telling know, me i told you that he said like he in the very beginning he's like he'd offered to release her from her covenant like a million times but she wanted to stay because she's like she, she's like i think she just wants to stay because she thinks i'll otherwise die and i'm the king because like no other like girl would let me feed off of her because i suck yeah. so much <laughs> like that's his thought process she, he's like yeah that's the reason she feels like obligated to stay <laughs> I think I totally forgot about that because when when she breaks up with him, I was like, they could have – like, this problem could have no, been they, solved this yes. whole time. Yes. <laughs> anyway, she finally have. stands up for herself and she leaves. And I'm like, good for her. And she goes home and tells vampire doctor, brother man, and she's like, Rath and I broke up and he dumped me for a human because she doesn't know that that Beth is, like, going to turn into a vampire. And she's also, like – like, v- her brother is, like, pissed, like, not only because it's a human because, like, Marissa is like so aristocratic and like pure mm. blood or whatever but like technically Beth is too because like Darius was like a princep or whatever so like she has like like royal bloodline even though she's like half human so Rath has cooked up like he's like uh, I've never taken Beth on like a date like I should take her on a date to show that like I don't know like I like her and like the butler like calls to give Beth a heads up and like it, it all gives me it feels very much like um like Beast and Beauty and the Beast when he's like fussing and like getting ready and having his hair done he's like oh I look so stupid in this soup but like Beth is so pretty like <laughs> he's practicing smiling in the mirror <laughs> It's so bad. He's like, he basically says like, oh my God, I'm turning into such a fucking simp, like without using the word simp. And then like torment comes in and he like lashes out and is like, well, you and your mate, like you're so fucking obsessed with her, whatever. And he's like, yeah, he's just like so, so royally upset. He's like, Beth is forcing me to have feelings and I do not like it. Zero out of 10 bad news bears (laughs) but he's just there in his little suit and like practicing smiling it's like good god i looked like a lawyer (laughs) (laughs) god so they show up and he's like so angry and they're like eating and she's like i don't know why the fuck he's so mad like why did i come here this was a huge mistake and like the butler's serving them and she's like it's like salad then soup and she's like ah i thought it was soup then salad but i I have to think that vampires have different social traditions, like the whole polygamy thing, because she's like found out that vampires that like, oh, yeah. you know, you can have like and- multiple ladies that you drink from. Yeah, specifically in that direction, which is just like, again, why? Why why are we doing this, J.R. Ward? But he's like, but then Rath is like, why are you scared of me again? Because he, and she's like, I'm not. She's like, you're being so weird. Like, that's why. And he's like, no, like you were freaked out when you came in. And it's because like Butch was like, you know, stay away from him or whatever. She saw him almost kill Butch. Like, well, well that's the thing. She's like, said, yeah. she's like, why are you scared of me again? And he, she's like, well, you, I like watched you almost kill my friend last night. And he says, and I quote, "Christ, not that again." <laughs> oh my god! Like, it's like, it's like, um, I don't know. I just felt like Bella being like, "Oh my god, I can't believe Jessica's still mad." Like a day later, <laughs> like, what does she want? A written apology? Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like aggressively, he's like, why aren't you eating? Like, why aren't you eating your soup? <laughs> <laughs> he's all, she's like, they're like going over like vampire legends. So like how like, you know, they don't eat people, but like they can't go out in the sun and like whatever. And he's like thinking in his head, he's like, I hate humans because they're bullies and because they beat me up when I was a kid before I turned into a vampire. But mostly 
I hate them because of their shitty vampire lore. Like, God, so, like, when Dracula came out, like, that set us back centuries. <laughs> He's, like, so pissed. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I'm just imagining, like, Wrath watching Twilight and just, like, like picking up the entire, like, TV screen and just throwing it across the room. <laughs> like, so ripping sad. it in half and then, like, in whatever whatever book that Edward, like, rips the TV in half. He's like, ah, oh, fuck, I played right into their hands. <laughs> He's so upset. <laughs> and I was like, I you got your priorities in order. <laughs> like, <God. it's> great. <laughs> and then he's like, he's like, mine. He's like, Beth, you need to like stay here for your safety. And she's like, no, I'm going to work. And he's like, he wasn't going to beg. Warriors did not beg. And I'm like, I'll, I'll see about that. And then he's like, please. <laughs> The next scene, please, Beth. And he shows her his sick underground room that's hidden behind a portrait. Um, and they go on down to this like creepy basement. And then, and this is when Beth is finally like, we should use a condom because she's like been worrying about STDs this mm-hmm. whole time. And he's like, haha, don't worry. Like, I can't get STDs. And in this scene, um, we also get an explicit comparison of her butt cheeks to peaches. So, like, the peach emoji is strong in t- <laughs> when this book came out. Despite God. not existing. Like JR <laughs> invented the peach emoji for the butt. That's all I'm saying. I mean, that's why it's that, right? <laughs> why can't vamp- can vampires like go out in the sun if they're covered? Like could they just wear like head to toe clothing? I don't know. Apparently that seems like a huge flaw if not. I feel like they must not be able to, or else why wouldn't they? I don't I guess know. the same reason that the Twilight vampires don't just do that. Well, also the same reason like that these vampires, like it comes in later, they're like where they can't it's like daytime and like wrath is like trapped in his basement bedroom right, exactly like he can't go out and i'm like why did you build this house with like why didn't why don't you have blinds <laughs> it's yeah. like i don't understand like, metal, like, yeah, why they like, they're just... talking about another house they have that has metal shutters so you can actually walk around and i'm like why the fuck didn't right. you i mean like, they why? do acknowledge that the fact that like darius's mansion doesn't have like blinds or like shutters is like a, a bad <laughs> very right, bad like, thing yeah, Marissa's house. It doesn't make sense. Also, like while while um they're like taking a pause in their sex marathon, and um Beth goes into Darius's old room, and it's just filled with pictures of her. Like the walls mm-hmm. are just filled with like creepy, like far like secret pictures like, not taken of her like throughout her whole life. Like one from like a month ago. <laughs> She's like, God, I'm just like, sir. <laughs> absurd why <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why she had like a good experience in the foster system because they just like killed anyone who like <laughs> would have like done any i don't know so wrath like at some point he's like go- gone through and cataloged like why each of his like quote-unquote brothers would be like a danger to beth and why they're like a shit human being but, like no one is they don't think less of anyone than zadist who like has a twin but like zadist was like you know stolen and like made into a, some kind of like blood slave and so he's like really fucked up and like you know, apparently, you know, total sadist, totally evil. And he like gets off on like women being afraid of him. And like the first time Beth le- meets him, he's like about to like rape her. And she, he's like, what, you think you can run away from me? Like what? And and he's like, assuming you live through the sex or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck is it is? And then they find out about the dead sex workers that Mr. X has killed. And they quote, look like their necks were chewed on. And they all assume it was sadist. Like, they're all like, oh, yeah, yeah, it must have been him. And I'm like, why do you keep this guy around? And, like, later on, they're, like, immediately, like, quick to believe that he would, like, betray them. So, I'm like, why the fuck do you keep this guy around if you have – like, he seems like such a – you have such a low opinion of him. Like, why on – what can he possibly contribute? Well, first of all, Zadis is the best – Zadis is, like, the only one who's, like, as good a fighter as Wrath. And also because Fury is his twin and Fury is, like, super protective of him. So they have like that whole. But anyway, yeah. So while Beth is alone looking at creepy pictures of herself and having this bad experience with Zadist, Rage and Wrath. <sighs> Sorry, I just like a wave of sickness <laughs> hit me when I said those names out loud. Um, they're off hunting lessers and they almost get ambushed. And so Rage, his like curse is like, I I am very fuzzy on the details of why. But basically what happens is that anytime he gets even mildly angry, he turns into like a giant beast. <laughs> he just yeah. like bursts into this beast. Yeah. And so he turns into a giant terrifying beast and then he like eats all the lessers. <laughs> Yep. Just scoops them right up. Um, and honestly, like, I'm gonna be honest, like he turned into a beast, and like I don't know what it was about the description of the scene, but I was like, it's kind of hot. I was like, I kind of want to read Rage's book now. And I'm just like, the fact that he turns into like a giant beast and like just eats people like indiscriminately is just 
There's just something really hot about this. Oh, I was like, this has to be a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Like, I really, that better be what I it mean, is. The whole series. I, I know. Like, that's, that, that was before I got, we got the whole like Beast getting ready for dinner with Belle scene. Just like, like, no, wait. but like every single one of them is yeah. a Beast. It's all like a different version of Beauty and the Beast because they're yeah. all like scarred, like drama like you know yeah men that need a woman to bring out their humanity you know God, yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah they're off doing that back at the ranch like zadis is about to like rape beth because he doesn't know like she's wrath's woman or whatever and then like wrath saves her just in time um and we do get a moment like this is like the beginning of the redemption of Zetas, and I will admit, like Zetas was redeemed for me by the end. Like I, yeah, sure. I don't know. I'm just like very good at forgetting. I'm gonna need more details. It seems like there were a lot of misconceptions that we were given about what he's actually like. Like he doesn't actually kill women. Like he's never actually killed a woman he has sex with. He definitely yeah. gets off on like them being afraid and has like a lot yeah. of them. But I don't it's know. unclear. I think I'm just like I have very wonky standards. Like on one hand, I'm like if a man like cheats or if he's like me, like if he's like. I don't know, like emotionally manipulative. I'm like, no, that's disgusting. But if a man is like, I'll kill you and rape you. And then what? like a few chapters later, like they're falling in love. Like for some reason, my brain is like, yep, checks out. And I think that uh, that's just probably why I like mafia romance. <laughs> like I can just tolerate mafia. Like I have different, like it's the emotional bad stuff that I can't take but like the physical bad stuff I'm like like but there's a difference between like the physical abuse and I don't know like it's me very context dependent on that I think with Zadis a lot of the stuff we're told about him is not actually true so keep that yeah. in mind well I'm just saying like I like by the end I was like despite the fact that he threatened to rape Beth I was I'm like team Zadis but <laughs> I'm like ex- <laughs> I mean it's arguably like the same thing that Butch basically like in his head was like I'm gonna do it for too quick before she can run away. Like, ah, you know, it's, really. it's along the same spectrum. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. But we do get the moment like after he, of him like being tender to rage because rage um, has really bad indigestion and is just generally like worn out from being a beast. And then Beth <laughs> offers rage tums oh, yeah. for his indigestion. <laughs> and just the fact that like tums would work after you've like eaten a bunch of lessons. <laughs> It's hilarious to me. God. <laughs> and Wrath is like, oh my gosh, she's like taking care of my brother's TM. Okay, so we get we get the Tum scene and then we get a, a quick flash to Mr. X. And the only thing that I care about, he's like torturing a vampire. And then like afterward, like the vampire dies and he's like, oh, I've made a mess. But then he just like opens the barn doors and like to let the sun in and then just like everything poofs away. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, a great cleanup method. Like that's fabulous. Yeah. Also, Wrath tells Beth about his traumatic backstory and he's like worried that she's gonna think he's like a loser and she's like bro like what like your dad like locked you in a fucking closet and you couldn't get out like even if you wanted to like first of all you would have been killed anyway second of all like there was literally no way for you to help yeah. <laughs> like I, like I didn't scream out. so they couldn't find me like that's what a good male would have done and I'm like all right this is the whole theme of like unnecessary self-sacrifice to like be a quote-unquote man like why also yeah. the convenient cleanup method like contributes to wrath's trauma because he's like yeah and then the sun came up and they oh, all yeah. went poof and so I didn't even have anything to bury like yeah, and then and then he is like, "Are you sure you don't think I'm a loser?" And Beth is like, "You okay? You're like, we're gonna need to like get something straight right now. Like, you're gonna need to start fucking believing me. Like, when I tell you, like, if I tell you like this is how I feel, like, you're gonna just kind of have to take that as wisdom." And she like makes him repeat it like a four year old. She's <laughs> like, "I will believe Beth. Say it back to me." <laughs> and he's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> "I really love it." Okay, yeah. So Beth goes home and completely predictably as they've all been saying was going to happen yet still did nothing to prepare for she starts turning into a fucking vampire in her apartment <laughs> like what and she's like in extreme pain it's really painful she's like who is meowing in the background who is meowing and butch conveniently comes to like check on her at this point and he's like oh my god she had a drug overdose like i need to call 911 and he tries to like call 911 and then she's like no no it's not an overdose and he's like oh she, she's like i i need wrath like he needs to take me to wrath and he's like it's not an overdose it's withdrawal because he's her fucking like drug dealer and he's what blah, 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 blah. but she convinces him to like take her to wrath and like gives him the address and yeah. everything and he does and he rolls up and wrath like is immediately like oh my god like i'll help her and he's like 
all his, all the brothers are there. Like they've been having a little powwow, and he's like, no one else gets to like kill the human except for me. So they all just like start bullying him. But I was just like at this point, like I was just really hoping for a romance between Butch and one of the brothers. Like we didn't get it, but like he was ambitious. Bit- they bond over their mutual yeah. love of the Boston yeah, Red but, Sox. But first, but first, he's like trying to rile them up, and he's like, oh, like you must be really into me, like whatever, and. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to kill your wife or something. And he's like, I don't have a wife. And they're like, well, so the chicks don't want you. Why do you think I would? Like, And he was like, I was hoping to piss you off. And then they're like, you know, I kind of <sighs> like this guy. I was like, the level of com- chemistry between it's, – oh, it's between the one who looks like a model. I'm picturing as like a blonde Rage. 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 The level of chemistry between model boy and butch is like <laughs> off the charts. Like, Which yeah. one's the one that's celibate? That's the model one. Yeah. No, no, no. The model one is a, is a slut. I'm pretty sure Vicious is the one that's – celibate I vicious was or maybe model. it's fury it no the model one is definitely a slut because he's constantly talking about how all the ladies love him whatever i really what i do are really pre- really appreciate about both is that butch is that butch is ready to square off with the vampires at like all times he is ready oh, to yeah. fight with them like against all logic like these people could kick his ass in like five seconds flat but he is no fear like he's like he's getting in their faces he's like let's fight right now you and me outside 100 percent. no sense of self-preservation no he has the opposite like again he's suicidal like actually and then this dumbass sees marissa because marissa rolls up to tell she rolls up to tell wrath off she's like i'm gonna stand up for myself i'm gonna tell wrath that he treated me like shit so she comes over to say this and butch sees her and assumes that she's like a vampire sex slave or something well, because he still thinks, yeah. I know, but I was like, Butch, what the fuck? He does he does acknowledge, like, at that he's like, oh, my God, like, I'm so sorry. Well, he still thinks that they're, like, you know, he, he assumes that she's not a – she he doesn't even know what the vampire thing yet. He's just like, oh, you must be, like, you know, a prostitute, basically, who works for them. But they, they fall in love, which I'm glad. Like, I'm glad the love triangle – their, like, respective love triangles were resolved by, like – the like discarded lover is getting together like i really appreciate that yeah <laughs> that was great so now beth's turning into a vampire and she's almost dead and wrath is like suck my goddamn blood and then she does and, and she lives she's like too no no wait she's like pass out and he can't get her to drink it until he's like let me just casually give my jugular a little snip just to give her a little sip and i'm like what like this is why the hemophilia thing does not add up because if that was true he would definitely have bled out within seconds from the jugular your jugular like what the the mater- high maternal mortality is nothing but like internalized misogyny and 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 scene okay Silliness. she turns into a vampire Silliness. she turns into a vampire and this bitch wrath immediately proposes like a me- she like wakes up 30 seconds later he's like marry me <laughs> she's like okay <laughs> sounds good so, i was like we are moving full speed ahead here and i love it <laughs> yeah and oh um and so beth is like beth basically doesn't look any different physically for some reason even though wrath we find out was like very you know like small and thin as a human but turned and he turned into like this huge like giant man with quote he looked like he had paint rollers underneath his skin. Like, that's what his abs look like. But Beth doesn't look any different. The only difference is that, like, she doesn't need contacts anymore. She has, like, perfect vision. And but she can turn her her fingers into claws, which is excellent. Like a cat. She's like, Halloween is going to be fun. And despite now. the fact that we don't have any evidence that she can communicate with the cat, I am assuming that now her and Boo can have, like, conversations. Oh, yeah, definitely. I can see that. And then, yeah, so she goes up in, like, a rope or whatever, and all the, like, brothers see her, and then they, like, immediately pledge their loyalty. But at first, she thinks, like, they're coming towards her, like, with their knives out, and she's like, uh, what the fuck is going on? (laughs) It's like, and she's like, they dropped as if they'd been choreographed, and I'm like, all right, that's not a boy band. Like, (laughs) oh, my God, we're back. Yeah. <laughs> they can get together with the little They're all wearing tight terrible. leather pants and definitely a boy band. And this is now Butch. So Marissa's like, okay, this has been nice. I'll see you later. She does tell Wrath off. And Wrath is like, you're right. Like, I'm sorry. Um, which is good. You know, he takes accountability. He's like, I'll make it up to you. And then she like d- dematerializes in front of Butch. And Butch is like, just has a full on crisis. He's like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> and then he finds they like, they let him in on the secret. I don't, Marissa goes home and she's like, all right, that was good. Like, I got that off my chest. Like, Wrath apologized. I've got a new man in my life. Like, I'm happy. Like, I'm gaining self-confidence. And she tries to tell her vampire doctor brother. But vampire doctor brother is just so hangry that he, like, can't understand. Like, he just, like, won't listen to her. I um, mean, he's, like, he has his, like, this, like, scheme. He's, like, Wrath needs to die. Like, even though that's treason. 
So then Wrath goes to visit God to ask yep. for a divorce <laughs> and to get a second marriage certificate. And God is like, dude, you have – you're so disappointed. She's like, I'm not mad. I'm disappointed, really. She's like, I used to have chats all the time with your dad. We were tight. And I was hoping that you would step in and be my little pet, but you haven't. You fucking loser. So she's like, I will only give you this divorce and this marriage certificate if you be my friend. <laughs> And also be king. <laughs> and also be king. And also like step the king. fuck up, bitch. So, well, she is. She she like rightfully like chews him out. She's like, your people are dying because you won't be king. Not because you are their king and you're a bad leader. It's because you refuse to like. And no one else can be role. king while he's still alive. Which, you know, is definitely of my own making. But we're just going to ignore that. And um, you need to be king. <laughs> And then God gives him an engagement ring and is like, I'm coming to the wedding. It's tomorrow. So like chop, chop. <laughs> All right. <Yep>. Head out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. In the background, also, Billy Riddle is slowly being recruited by Mr. X to be mm -hmm. a lesser. And he does eventually become a lesser. That's yeah. all you really need to know about that. Mm -hmm. Beth and Wrath naturally have another sex marathon. And Beth is like, I love you. <laughs> and Wrath wakes up and he's like, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> and this is just constant until the very end of the book his response every time she's like i love you he's like like do you have a fever like is there something wrong with you? <laughs> like why <laughs> god so <laughs> the only member of the black dagger brotherhood that currently has a mate that he's in love with is rage and he has been with wellsy for like 200 years and they're like super into each other so Marissa, we, we heard about wellsy from like marissa who was like yeah like recently i tried to talk to wellsy to get some advice about wrath but you know she was just telling me about all about the great stuff and her relationship and like it just made me feel even worse so, like wellsy shit to marissa but wellsy shows up to beth and she's like oh my gosh like i can totally tell why wrath is into you you're so pretty which like just seems like a, i don't know it just seems like a total dig at marissa it's like oh like of course because you're pretty that means like, like wrath would be into you no. <laughs> yeah it does but she's like oh i'm glad i'm so glad i finally have someone to talk to like here's my wedding dress i i just remember you were because you were telling me about feeling like wellsy was a bitch before to like marissa but i just remembered like the way it's described is marissa's like i tried to go talk to wellsy but like wellsy just couldn't relate and like it wasn't like wellsy was like you fucking suck you can't make wrath happy she marissa was just like like she just pitied me like so it was like so clear that she, yeah, was she just pitied, like yeah but that's but like I mean, shitty thing to do i don't know what to like feel like i mean i don't know how else you're supposed to react like yeah sorry you're like vampire mate who like you like are like make any effort to, you could still be friends with her outside of that like you don't need to just be pity like, you're like oh boo are yeah. you like i'm so glad i'm not you well it really sucks to be you like they could have been friends outside of that. Like, Marissa doesn't – none of them – I don't know. The women aren't allowed to have lives no. for some reason. Well, So, yeah, Wellesley brings Beth a wedding dress that's allegedly from 1814, except the way that this dress is described is not a Regency era dress. I was like, Beth is not wearing an empire waist here. That's not what is I'm supposed to be imagining, and I <laughs> resent that. <laughs> and then right before the wedding, Rath is like, BRB, got to go kill Billy before I get married. So, like, he putzes off with one of the other friends. But, like – yeah, so they show up, and it's as, like, Mr. X and Billy are on their way to, like, turn Billy into a lesser, but, like, Billy thinks they're going to dinner in a movie. And he, like <laughs> – I'm just picturing he, like, materializes in front of the car going at full speed and, like, slams his hands on the car and stops it. That's what I'm picturing. I know that's not really what happens, but, like, I'm just picturing, like, a, you know, van stopping scene. It's hot. Yeah. And Mr. X is like, oh, my God, it's the king. I thought he was a myth. Like, what's he doing here? And Billy's just like, what's going on? But then the cops roll up, and so – uh, Wrath is like gotta go and like wipes Billy's mind, but like I guess can't wipe Mr. Mr. X's mind. But now, Miss, now like Mr. X, he's like, this is the big Kahuna. This is gonna like secure my place in the hierarchy. I need to like figure out a way to lure him in. And then, meanwhile, back at the ranch, Beth runs into Zadist. Oh yeah, so Beth is like, you know, they're all getting ready for the wedding and the dinner and whatever. And Beth is getting something out of the pantry when like Zadist comes in without noticing her, and she like accidentally bumps into him. And then realizes it's him and is, like, terrified. She's like, oh, my God, like, we're stuck in here. Like, he could do anything he wants. And he, like, he, like, looks at her. Christ, I know I'm ugly, but don't fear me. I'm not a total savage. And I'm like, I don't know, dude. Like, two sex workers turned up dead and your own crew assumed it was you. You also literally threatened to rape Beth a day ago. And now upon first meeting her, like – Bro, that's not why she's scared. It's because the last time she saw you, you threatened to assault her. And the only reason you backed <laughs> off is because you realized she wasn't fully human. Like, what? 
Yeah, yeah, it's whatever. But also in the background, Butch and Marissa are canoodling um, and they have their first kiss. And I love Butch is like, oh, my God, it's so sweet. Butch is like, you don't have to try. Mar- like Marissa's like, oh, do I please you? Like I'm trying to. And Butch is like, you just have to be yourself. Like it's fine. I like you the way you are. And I'm like, oh, I love this. Yes. He like says something. She's like, you're pretty. And then he's like, it's as if she didn't know how to handle compliments as though she hadn't gotten many of them. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. But they make out and she like is about to go suck his dick. And I just had a vision of like vampire blowjobs being like, you suck like the blood out of their t- <laughs> oh my god. Like you have an erection. Erection is caused by like blood, right? It like flows to the dick. So like vampire blowjobs is just sucking the blood. Oh my god. Well, yeah, because like it's like they only have one fluid, just like the Twilight vampires. It's just like blood instead of have we figured it out? Like that's how Ian that's how Beth manages to leave Higgies on Ian McKenzie's dick. It's like she's sucking the blood. <laughs> my god (laughs) it doesn't happen but i just like had i was like this i want this i want this at some point (laughs) then butch like accidentally rips off the arm of a chair as they're making out which i feel like is foreshadowing so now we get the marriage ceremony and the marriage ceremony i adore everything about this so the, the vampire marriage ceremony is basically just like the officiant aka god is like to the woman he's she's basically like so is this guy good enough for you? And like, if he is, do you want to like hang out with him for the rest of your life? And the woman is like, yes. And to the man, it's like, will you literally die for her? No, I, be clear. Will you literally die for this woman? And then he gets her name carved in his back. And she's like, oh, man, I wish I had a shorter name because Elizabeth like has nine letters. Oh but then they pour. So each of the brothers, like, gets to carve a different letter or whatever. And then they pour salt water on his back, like, presumably so it doesn't heal. So, like, it scars. And and then it's implied that they do that, like, if they have kids, that they will also do that, like, with each of the kids' names. Yes, that's what he said. Yeah, and I was like, yes. I know, like, I know this is fucked, but like, I just like really like, I adore this. <laughs> this is fucking great. God. And then they all sing, and Zadis has a voice like an angel, so that's how you know he's secretly good. At oh, that's like what I was. Voice. I wrote. I was like, <laughs> at this point, I was like, oh my, like, wait, wait, what did I exactly did I write down? I was like, so is Zadis going to be redeemed because he has a nice tenor and the voice of yes. an angel? Like, okay, yes, the, that, yeah. it shows that he has a heart of gold, Rachel. <laughs> that's what it is. Fucking. whatever so the vampire doctor is like so pissed because he thinks marissa is still hanging out with wrath and he doesn't know about the marriage and whatever um so he tries to hire zadis to kill wrath and one of the other ones torment overhears, overhears. i just really want to figure out which one's celibate i'm still trying to figure that out i feel like it's i know it doesn't matter fury or vicious it's not vicious. it's not torment because he's fucking whatever and then uh torment narks to wrath um but then it we find out later on that it, like it turns out that like he didn't hear the whole conversation he heard like the guy was like will you kill wrath and like for a million dollars and zadis was like i kill for free and then torment was like gotta go narc but then the rest of the sense was like like but i would never kill my king like, i would only kill you. you for free like. yeah he's like fuck you um so zadis is loyal whatever but this now now wrath is like oh no like zadis is going to try to assassinate me and like also the doctor has got to die. Meantime, though, Beth is like, "I'm hungry." And Wrath is like, "But the sun is still up." And she's like, "Well, you said like maybe I could go out in the sun. Might as well find out now." And then she go she doesn't just go into the house. She goes the fuck outside. <laughs> She doesn't, she doesn't, she like tries her fate. Like she doesn't even like try her hand first or something. Like, I don't understand. It's insane. No thoughts. She's like out. But I mean, she can go out in the sun. So that's great. Um, And while Wrath is like brooding in his basement bedroom, Zadis calls him. He's like, just letting you know, the doctor wants to kill you. And Wrath is like, did the other boys put you up to this? Like you just trying to save your skin. And Zadis is like, fuck off, bro. Like, no, I'm loyal. Yeah. I was like wondering, like, when are they going to test this? And I was like, I was anticipating some kind of like dramatic reveal, like where Beth like saves the day because she can go out in the sun. But like, no, it's not at all used. Beth is making a sandwich in the kitchen and Mr. X has been doing recon because the doctor narked to him in the alleyway after Zadis like didn't agree to kill Wrath. And Mr. X is like, oh, my God, she's wearing the vampire queen ruby engagement ring. It's the vampire queen. And then he like 
jumps in and tranquilizes her and kidnaps her. Um, and Wrath is like super pissed, like hanging out in his bedroom. He's like, God fucking damn it. Like I can't leave for several more hours. Oh my God. Wait, can we can we put pause for one second? Because I've just made a startling discovery that I, I need to investigate. So sorry, I was trying to figure out which one of them is celibate, and I came across Vicious Vicious's Bish- thing, and apparently his thing is like having people tie him up. And it's nice. like the only or no, sorry, he doesn't do that a lot. He the only woman to ever tie him up, however, has been Jane. And the only male to ever do so was Butch. So I'm trying to figure out the context for that. And I'm finding like quotes that are like, I don't know. I just really want to know like what like the, the, the circum like is are we ever bros being best here? Are they just bros? Buddies. Are they like because here's a quote from Lover Revealed. V Butch said, Don't leave, okay? Never. V brushed Butch's hair back with a gesture so so tender it was out of place coming from a male. Queer baiting. What a tease. What's the context that Butch is gonna tie him up in his pet in his sex know. penthouse? I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'll let you know when I get to that book. So yeah, so Beth is like tied up on the table. Billy and Mr. X are like Okay, we got to prepare. We're not going to do anything to Beth yet because we're trying to lure Wrath here. And we're going to like, we've set up bazookas and like all all of this shit. Like they've just like set up the barn to like have a lot of weapons that ultimately end up being incredibly ineffective. And I love like Beth is chained to the table and the bullets on the table like start to rattle and the... (laughs) <laughs> the like the temperature drops like 20 degrees and it's just oh it's like another one of these scenes where i'm like oh my god i can feel it i know exactly like i can picture this da, 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 so da, perfectly da, yeah it's da, literally da, da, like da, da. and like i just imagine beth being like he's coming <laughs> and then wrath just like fucking bursts into the door and just god. wipes them the fuck yeah. out like this and man beth, like somehow gets untied and like helps by like stabbing a dog which is very rude, he but- takes he he takes one of her manacles off and so she can take the rest of his off but yeah wait when wrath fills in i wrote down the quote he burst into the door and then wrath filled the doorway the air around him warping with vengeance oh my god <laughs> <What>? <laughs> like i just don't understand why they didn't immediately teach beth how to dematerialize because all of this could have been avoided she would have just escaped no because they were iron they're iron manacles and they steel. can't dematerialize or and steel, steel whatever i guess okay. well steel is made yeah. is like pure whatever yeah but so like it's it's definitely something that they can dematerialize from. so unfortunately beth does not get to be the one to kill billy i know i was so pissed i was like i really wanted beth to kill billy she does get to hit mr x with a hammer mm-hmm. meanwhile instead of asking for backup to come get beth Wrath sends the rest of the gang over to the Martial Arts Academy to kill the rest of the lessers. So, like, that Which whole thing fabulous. goes up in smoke. Like, the arson yeah. team is called in. <laughs> They're like, what's going yeah. on here? Like, Jose. It's the same thing. Like, Mr. X is like, oh, I should maybe I should call for reinforcements. But, like, yeah, no, me and Billy can totally take down, like, the king of the vampires by ourselves. Like, I don't want them to be involved, like, the other people to be involved. Yeah. So, like, they're just, he is just, like, both. I'm like, you literally I... get your ass whooped because you're just, like, so stupid. Yeah. But so Wrath does not come out of this, like, in one piece, literally. He has, like, a whole huge hole in his abdomen and beth's like no live and he's like beth i wish you were pregnant i don't want you to be alone i'm like all right so you're just gonna like make her a single mom yeah i'm sure that'll definitely make the grief easier like what (laughs) (laughs) also like why i wish you would like have a 50 for 50 chance of dying in childbirth like but anyway beth is like oh my god like how do i save him and she calls like one of the brothers i don't know like rage or someone and he's like you have to cut your wrist and like let him drink that's his only chance like you know, I'll talk you through it, but it's, it doesn't work. Because it turns out her blood isn't pure enough. And Marissa right. is ultimately the one that's saving him. And the vampire doctor feels bad because Marissa's like, bro, me and Rath are cool. And like, I have a boyfriend now. So like, still the fact that Marissa has dick. to like save him. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, I was like, so there is some truth to this blood purity thing. Right. And like how many times – this can't be the only near-death experience that like – yeah. Rath has had. Like how many times so – Mar- Marissa probably did. Marissa probably is the reason he's still alive, frankly. And, like, what? She's just going to have to, like, come to the rescue every other time because Beth can't do it? I don't know. Like, Maybe, like, Beth will, like, grow stronger, like, the longer she's a vampire or something. Like, she know. just turned, like, 48 hours ago. Like, this this all happens very quickly. Anyway, the vampire doctor is like, I'm going to make it up to you. So he, like, sews up Wrath and then Wrath lives. And then the vampire doctor is like, I'm sorry. And Wrath is like, 
I promised I would make it up to Marissa and she's going to be really fucking sad if I kill you. So like you can live, I guess, but don't do it again. Importantly, <laughs> for the same reason that he like didn't want to kill Butch originally, he's like, oh, this guy isn't afraid of death. He's like, oh, the doctor has no self-preservation. That makes me less. That makes me not want to kill him as much. Stupid. But also, when Wrath wakes up, like Beth has been like sleeping by his bedside table, baby Wrath wakes up and he starts to cry when he sees Beth and he's like, oh my God, like Beth is alive. Like, thank God. It's just so soft. It's so soft. The end of this book just gets, with every passing page, like progressively softer Mm -hmm. because like the brothers are all sleeping outside the hospital room, like like little kids at sleepaway camp. Like they're all just like in a pile. It's wonderful. Okay, so now we get a bunch of different scenes that just wrap everything up. Like we mm-hmm. said, Mr. X is alive. No, wait, wait. Is Mr. X alive? I thought that Omega yes. finishes him off. He's alive after the, meeting. Uh, the Omega appears and is like, I'm going to help you heal. And then it's left on a But it's like the Omega's help is like the worst thing ever. Yeah, but I don't know whether that's just going to – Mr. X is going to get turned into like even more of a monster. Yeah, because maybe. I was thinking like during the fight, I was like, it's weird that like the final bosses get finished off. Like first of all, that like Billy ends up being the final boss like before we knew Mr. X was alive. Right. And then like the fact that it ends so quickly and they both get taken down like so easily. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did think so I feel weird. like Mr. X is not – done yet yeah i guess so but i haven't looked that up but yeah so mr x is dead darius is gonna get resurrected because the scribe version is like yeah. i like you a lot so i'm gonna let you go hang out with your daughter but you're gonna be resurrected in a different body and you're also not gonna remember or anything yeah. about her, and she's so. like i like you because you don't ask questions because that's what annoyed her, annoyed her about wrath she's like you yeah obey me that's my game <laughs> so yeah darius is is back and he does get his own book and now he we're does? in the blog Yes, I looked at it. his name is like John Winters or something. But oh, it's like I in assumed the he was going to be like a cat or something and like get to be her <laughs> friend. Because no, she's a person. He's going to be missing a faculty. So I assumed that that was like, I don't know, like something to do with being human. No, I think that's his memory. No, that was a separate criteria. It was like, you're not going to remember her at all. You're going to be missing a faculty and something. You're going to be a different body. I don't know. It's he he it's in the description. It's definitely he's definitely a guy. He gets his own like love story book. It's like like one of the books. Um, So in the epilogue, once again, the most important thing that we have to wrap up is that Boo has moved in into the mansion (laughs) and all of the brothers are obsessed with him. And it's this this ending scene is just like it's so soft. It's just like this cute family dinner. They're all like hanging out like at the table, like laughing. And they're like, we're going to move in together in this like fortified cabin, giant mansion cabin in the mountains. And uh, we should move in with them too. And like, they're like, this is great because now the cat will come <laughs> move in with us too. Oh my gosh. I know. And they're like, we can get some retractable metal shutters so we can move around during the day. Yeah. <laughs> But it, this ending is so absurd. Jesus it is so – like, I adore it, but it is so, like, tonally so different from the rest yeah. of the book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, John Winters is mute. That's what it is. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. He also uh, gets to grow up as an orphan, as he should. Good. That's good karma. Bad is he karma, a vampire? Uh, I assume so. Uh, he has an interest in the martial arts. <laughs> of course. Of course. So, like, everyone has, like, yeah. He can demater- dematerialize, so I'm assuming. So he's yes. half of it. Okay, so he's, like, half in At least. Yeah, anyway. It literally took, like, six months for this book to come off hold at the library. So uh, I don't know when the next book is going to come off hold, but <laughs> keep you updated. <laughs> Are you sure they have it? Nope. No, I, no, I'm not. But I have five separate library apps, so hopefully one of them. <laughs> God. one of them will have it <laughs> all right cat scale baby oh my god off the charts just off like insane charts. i feel like i don't even need to discuss this wrath like obviously all vampires can communicate with cats boo fabulous i can only imagine a spoiler okay i'm gonna i'm just gonna say this spoiler from when i i read boo's fandom wikipedia page because i wanted to make sure he didn't die he also reincarnated boo <laughs> becomes the host for the scribe virgin <laughs> boo becomes god <laughs> What? I don't I don't know how. Wait, I don't but like at one that. point Boo becomes the host for the scribe version. I don't like that. Like permanently? Like he's gonna lose his like she's gonna like possess no I- him or something? <laughs> I have no idea how it works, but Boo becomes God. <laughs> what the fuck? So Boo, I'm just saying Boo does like continue to have a starring role. 
my god the way it's written is it seems to imply that it's like two consciousnesses so like boo is like still his cat self and the scribe virgin is also there <laughs> just hanging out <laughs> god i love nice. it I'm just imagine like boo like the nian cat like flying around <laughs> all the time uh yeah so we have an actual cat we have cat language literally we have hissing we have purring yeah growling i just feel like being nocturnal is also a cat like sleeping during the day yeah very cat like yeah nine lives kind of yeah because they're i mean he gets literally he gets he gets his whole intestines blasted through (laughs) yeah it's interesting well no it's interesting that you age like the people the vampires can't go out in the sun but they like age slower. So like it's like the sun is aging you. That's not really related to the cat thing, but yeah. just something I mentioned. But say. the lessers are immortal unless they get killed in battle. Yeah, but they're just like unholy, whatever. Like, yeah, you know, they don't not have souls, natural. Literally. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, just like insane. And it's completely like, it's almost like they're all anthropomorphized cats. Like they have claws. Like I, if you told me they had tails, the fangs, I wouldn't question, I wouldn't it, question at it, all. it at all. No. Yeah. Somehow the leather is also cat like. They're yeah. all dressed up like Boo. They're all just like vampire versions of Boo. <laughs> oh, one of them can tell the future, which I feel yeah, like. Yeah, which is also very, like it <laughs> yeah. pops up maybe like two times. But but it's also like more of like a, it's torment. He can tell the future, but it's more of like a Greek oracle kind of thing where it's right. like obscure riddles rather than like an Alice Cullen type thing. All right. Three, yeah. two, two, one, one nine. Ten. Oh, I do 10. I'm honestly should be 10. I just was trying to think as I was saying it, like, which ones we have 10 to. But I feel like if there's anything that's a 10, it's I this I feel one. like we gave Ice Planet 10. And yeah, I feel like this be is 10. on the same level. And this yeah. has an actual cat, like, as yeah, a character. Yeah, that's true. I just, like, the minute that we got a description of, like, Wrath purring in return to, like, Boo's purr of welcome through the window. <laughs> it's like, it's a 10 out of 10. <laughs> like, that's it. That, that line alone <laughs> seals the deal, <laughs> clinches this. Where can they find us, Rachel? Just get to me. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, at We Read It One Night, on Twitter, at We Read It, Read it Podcast. You can email us, We Read It One Night at gmail.com. This is coming out in July, so I'm not even going to speak about the clock. Um, <laughs> the clock app. Yeah, we're going to. You can also one. find us on Redbubble for mm-hmm. merch. Yes. We Read It Podcast. Um, that'll also be linked in the description, and it's the link in the description of all of our social media, so you can click that. We have some great merch. This, yeah, we're recording this over a month in advance because the book came off hold at the library, so that's how we need to do it. Also, don't forget to rate and review us wherever you're listening, if that is a possibility. I think the only options are on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, uh, but if you're listening to an app that I'm not familiar with, that lets you rate and review. Click that five stars, baby. Woo-hoo. And leave us a review. I want to start doing so. Uh, cur- as of right now, our, our most recent um, Apple podcast review is like a direct response to a call out in a video. And I kind of want to like, or uh, in an episode to like mm-hmm. something we said, like, I'll leave this as a review in the episode. So I kind of want to like start doing that. We're like, yeah. you listen to this episode, like, leave this review. <laughs> yeah. So what should we do for this? Um, meow or like purr or like any type of like cat noise. I don't know. Oh, give us, write down your name for the Black Dather bro- Brotherhood. <laughs> what is like an, ang- what is like a, like a violent emotion and give us like your weirdest spelling that you can think of. Yeah. <laughs> Angsty, and, like and your review, your angsty stuff. Who would you be? What's your? What's yeah. Your, what's your yeah. black da- bla- black dagger brotherhood? Yeah, name? like your stripper name, <laughs> like your black dagger brotherhood name. Yeah, <laughs> write that in the review. Godspeed, Godspeed comrades. comrades.